What's up booktube? Welcome back. My name is Laura if you're new here and today I'm talking about some wonderfully queer fantasy worlds. So something that I talk about quite often when I'm doing reviews for books is casual queerness within the bookish world. So what I mean by that is just I love when I'm reading a book and queerness is just never challenged. The book might not be about a queer character, but just as the characters are going about their business doing whatever it is that they're doing, you see queer people just existing in that world and it's never challenged, it's never a problem. And I love that, I appreciate it so much because I mainly read fantasy for escapism. I like to escape this world and just go into somewhere else and, and experience a totally different set of things that I don't get to do here. And so one thing that just brings me the utmost joy is seeing myself just being able to exist in a world where none of us have ever had to be afraid, we've never had to feel any kind of shame or fear about who we are, and that's what today's video is about, is books that have that. These characters live in a world where their queerness or other people's queerness is not a problem, it has never been a problem, and it never will be a problem. I thought that this video would be a great way to wrap up my Pride Celebration video series that I've been doing all month. If you missed the first three, I will leave them linked up above as well as down below. So without further ado, I will get right into the books, starting with Among the Beasts and Briars by Ashley Poston. This book was so much fun. It is a fantasy novel with a like fairy tale kind of prose to it, which I adore. I love fairy tales. So this one follows the daughter of the royal gardener in this beautiful village in the middle of this enchanted forest that has been under the protection of the Lady of the Wilds for I think a couple hundred years because in the woods are these monsters, but the crown that the Lady of the Wilds gifted to the royal family stops the monsters from being able to enter the town and infecting everybody with the wood curse and turning everybody else into those same monsters. It also gifts the royal family with magic. Nobody else has magic except for our main character whose mother actually came from a different village. Nobody knows where she came from but she traveled through the woods to get to their town and now her daughter secretly has magic as well. So our story kicks off at the coronation of the new queen who is our main character's best friend. But of course things go horribly wrong when the monsters of the woods come and attack and turn everybody into monsters as well. So the main character who is unaffected because of her magic has to take the crown and escape through the woods to try and find the Lady of the Wilds and hopefully have her help them once again. And she is accompanied by her other friend, I guess, who is a fox who's been following her around in her garden for the last several years, but she actually turns him human. So she's accompanied by him as well as a magical bear named Vala, who the fox can still talk to because he's still part animal. So it's the three of them traveling through the woods, escaping monsters, trying to survive basically, and just desperately trying to find the Lady of the Wilds before the wood curse takes them and they all end up monsters forever. I loved this book so much. It was just such a good time. It really is like a pretty typical like fairy tale plotline. You kind of know where things are going. There were a couple of small things that I didn't see coming, so that was really fun. But like it just has that kind of nostalgic fairy tale quality to it that reminds me of childhood and the stories that I would read when I was a kid. So like I loved that so much about it and it was just such a good time. I highly recommend it. It was just this beautiful fantasy world, very cottagecore. If you like cottagecore, read this book because you will enjoy it. Like it's literally the gardener's daughter who could make flowers grow with her blood. Like it's badass but also like really, really beautiful. So there's obviously a lot of like floral imagery and it's just this really stunning lush world that I really really enjoyed and I hope you do as well. <laughs> Next up is the Tea Dragon Society series by Kay O'Neill. This is a middle grade graphic novel series about tea dragons and the people who raise them. So a tea dragon is a teeny tiny little dragon. They're like this big and they grow tea leaves out of their horns if they are like properly cared for and if they feel loved and cared for and respected and if they're happy then their tea leaves can actually produce memories. So when you brew it properly and you drink it you can actually see the memories that this tea dragon has with the person that they're bonded to and you can share it with others. So it is a really beautiful kind of story. It is just so cute. Um, these three books don't have like much actual plot to them. They're mainly just character based, uh, which is fine by me because they are just an absolute delight to read. They are adorable and just a little piece of joy. They're so much fun and they are just packed full of queer characters. There's an older gay couple in, in all three of the books. The second book follows a non-binary main character. There's just so much queerness just woven throughout the story and it was just really beautiful to read. Plus the 
the author is non-binary as well and the third book just came out at the beginning of June I think it was and it was just wonderful as well and like I just recommend this whole series if you're having a day where you just really need to feel happy just read the series trust me and if you do pick them up I hope you feel the immense joy that they brought me after that is all the stars and teeth by Adeline Grace this one is a really interesting fantasy world um, the world in this one is like by far my favorite thing about it so in this one our main character is the princess of this kingdom um, that is made up of a bunch of little islands at the sea so it's a very like watery kind of pirate type of fantasy world which I love so much but how their society works is that the princess is told nothing like nothing at all about how things are run until she turns 18 I think it is and she can prove that she's worthy of having the crown by demonstrating her magic to the people so there are I think five different kinds of magic in this world and you're only allowed to practice one kind but there's one kind of magic soul magic that only the royal family is allowed to use so on the main character's testing night things do not go well she loses control of her magic and she ends up being put in jail until they figure out what to do with her. While she's in there though, a pirate named Bastion comes and frees her and says that he'll save her if she helps him by going along with him on a journey on the sea to go and do some stuff. I won't go into spoilers, but it's a whole piratey adventure. There's a stowaway, there's mermaids involved, there's a whole lot of badass fighting. Like, it's wonderful. This one is a duology. Book two came out earlier this year and I loved book two as well. It was really good. I actually liked book two more than book one. I think the world building was just so much better because uh, in book two you, you, like, you get to see more of the kingdom and like actually explore the different cultures with, within them. And the character development was fantastic. All the friendships, the found family, like it's just so good. <laughs> In Deeper Waters by F.T. Lukens is another fairy tale type of fantasy novel. This one is about a prince of a kingdom by the sea um, who has been hidden away his whole life because of a forbidden magic that nobody can know that he has. But of course there are rumors that he might have magic. So he spent his entire life hiding behind the castle walls until his 16th birthday where when he goes on his coming of age tour with his brother around the kingdom. So they get onto a ship and set off and shortly afterwards he meets a boy named Athlan who he quickly falls in love with. But of course shit happens and our main character gets kidnapped by mercenary pirates who are torturing him to try and figure out if he actually does have magic that way they can use him to start a war with the other kingdoms. This book was so much fun. The world building was fantastic. The whole magical lore is amazing. There are different kinds of creatures as well. There are also mermaids in this and talk about other kinds of creatures as well. So like I adored this book. Um, the writing style was amazing. It was this beautifully descriptive fantasy world where like I could just really picture all of these adorable little seaside villages and all the people within them. Like it was just such a delight to read. I love this one. I did do a full review for it uh, so I will link that on the screen as well as down below if you would like to check it out. But either way I highly highly recommend this one. I've also got The Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman. This one is a urban fantasy, so it's set in a village in like our world. I think it's like somewhere in the mountains. Uh, I forget where, but somewhere in America. But basically this town has these four founding families and these families keep this thing called the Mist at Bay. So the Mist is a kind of monstrous creature type of thing that can and will kill you if it gets its hands on you. Or it's Mist, I don't know how that works, but either way. For this book, I love the casual queerness so much. It's just such a wonderfully queer book. Like most of the main characters are all queer in some way. We have bisexual male main characters, which I, which I feel like is very rare to see. So I love it when I find those books. There are also some bisexual parents in here and I have never seen that anywhere else in any other book. It was just so delightful um, and like nobody questioned it. It was all just chill and fine. I just loved this book so much for that aspect at least. I wasn't personally the biggest fan of the plot of it, but I know a lot of people love this book. But just this whole world and how queerness was handled within it was just so wonderful. So even though it's not my personal favorite book, I still definitely would would recommend it. And finally the last book is The Winter Duke by Claire Eliza Bartlett. This one it has such a cool concept. Our main character lives in this like frozen ice country like they have a, a literal ice palace it like like the imagery was stunning in my head it was written so beautifully but it's a like ruthless battle for the throne and our main character does not want the throne but lucky for her she's like 13th in line so she'll never have to deal with it but the problem with her siblings is that they can will and have killed for the throne and it's basically just trying to survive and hoping that her younger siblings won't try and murder her to get the throne but of course 
things go wrong when during her brother's coronation people from all over the kingdoms are brought to their court for him to pick a suitor and in this world you can pick whoever the hell you want it does not matter the gender which was amazing to see so he was trying to choose his suitor when the entire family aside from the main character were hit with some kind of magical curse and they were all put into a weird kind of coma that nobody knows how to wake them up from so because the main character was the only one not affected by this curse for some reason she all of a sudden has to at least temporarily inherit the throne as well as the warrior bride that his brother chose for himself is now her bride um, and things kind of go from there and she has to deal with all these political things and like things that she never spent any time learning about because she never thought that she would ever have the throne so she knows nothing like literally nothing this book is just her trying to figure out what happened to her family trying desperately to wake them up so that she won't have to take on this responsibility and also falling in love with her new bride <laughs> so this was a really fun inventive world i loved the imagery the writing was fantastic it was a really beautiful vivid lush world in my head there's also like a really cool kind of like mermaid world underneath them they live on top of a like frozen lake and underneath them is this magical watery world that our main character is obsessed with it was fascinating to read i loved the concept of it and just overall this world building was just so well done i really adored it all right and that's all i've got for you guys today if you have any other book recommendations for worlds with casual creatures in them please do let me know i am always desperate to read more of these they just make me so happy i hope they also make you happy and hopefully you found some new books to read but in the meantime happy pride thank you so much for celebrating pride with me this way by doing these videos watching them uh, leaving comments um it is always appreciated so thank you all so much for watching i hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world and i will catch you in the next video bye